Welcome back to the Our Ambassadors series. Today we're joined by Australia's Ambassador to Zimbabwe, Matthew Newhouse. Thanks Matthew for joining us. Thanks Dana, good to be here. So Matthew, what's the situation like in Zimbabwe at the moment? Well, it's complicated. Um, we have elections coming next year and uh, President Mugabe's ZANU-PF party, which is currently in a coalition government with Morgan Changarai and the MDC, and another smaller MDC party um, will be competing again in these elections. So people are a, a little bit worried as to whether we'll see violence again and whether we'll see some of the problems that happened uh, in the past. But for the moment, the place is pretty stable. The two, indeed three parties, are working together in this coalition government and um, it, the MDC have really developed their capacity for government and have managed to make some progress with their policies um, and with freeing up the uh, democratic space. We now have a situation where we do have independent newspapers, where we do have a robust political debate. At the moment there's a uh, debate over a new constitution. There's still not agreement as I speak on this new constitution, but it would be good if we could get agreement on the new constitution and it be adopted in a referendum before we go to elections. So it's a bit of a wait and see in terms of the political process, but meanwhile the economic development is proceeding and we've come back from those dark days of high inflation, um, dreadful diseases like uh, cholera and uh, real poverty and misery. So what can Australia do? Australia's doing a lot. We're now one of the largest donors there. In fact, after the UK, US, EU and UN, Australia is the fifth largest donor to the country. And we've been assisting in areas which are really quite crucial. Water and sanitation, rehabilitating the water systems of major cities so, and helping to get rid of diseases like typhoid and cholera and helping with basic health needs through that. We've also been helping rebuild the agribusiness um, area of activity so that the fields which were idle leading to starvation in the past after farm invasions are now being utilised and many uh, new, often younger farmers are being trained in commercial farming techniques so they can make a good living. And we're also helping in areas like the Revenue Authority so that Zimbabwe can start to pay its own way again. But beyond that, we're supporting civil society, we're supporting democratic groups as, as they um, work to bring back democracy in Zimbabwe so that people can have their say and be empowered. There's quite a few Australians in Zimbabwe. We have over 700 registered, but we have many more thousands with strong links here who've been educated here, um, who are building up commercial contacts here, who are working in the growing mining industry. We even have Rio Tinto with a diamond mine in Zimbabwe, and we have other interests. So it's important that from Australia we do our bit, and we really are doing our bit. Matthew, you cover a lot of different countries, from dangerous places like the Democratic Republic of Congo to a range of other countries including Zambia and then tourist areas like Victoria Falls. What's your advice to Australians who might be visiting some of these places? Well, it's a mixed bag, I have to say. Um, of course, Democratic Republic of Congo is a particularly tricky destination. Um, I'm the first Australian ambassador to be accredited there, and, but it's a, it's a part of the world which is mineral rich and Australian companies are becoming more and more engaged. But there's still conflict going on in the northeast of the country, on the borders uh, with Rwanda, um, and it can be quite dangerous. So the UN has a big peacekeeping operation there. We have travel advices out which make the difference between places like the mining area around Katanga, which is you know, fairly safe to visit, and those more dangerous areas where we really strongly advise you don't go. Other parts of my patch, like um, Malawi or Zambia, they have famous tourist destinations like the Victoria Falls or Lake Malawi. And we get a lot of Australian tourists going to these places. They're fine, they're good, but you have to always be wary as a tourist. And it's important that you read the travel advisories. We keep these updated every few months so you get the latest information. 
and uh, I really encourage people to register with the uh, embassy and to read their travel advisories. Since you joined the department, you've had quite a few different postings. What's the relationship like at the moment between Australia and the countries of Africa, and how is it changing? Well, at the moment, the relationship is perhaps in the best shape it's ever been. Um, for a long time, Australia did see Africa as somewhat out of its sphere of influence. We were very focused on Asia and the Pacific, and beyond that, of course, we have traditional ties with Europe, and we have always engaged in the United Nations and multilaterally. But we have more and more interest now in Africa. I've just come from the Africa Down Under Mining Conference in Perth, and we had over 2,000 people there and numerous companies, I mean over 100 companies, I think. And we had, I think, around 20 ministers from African countries. And it just symbolised for me the way the relationship has grown. And we had Senator Carr there uh, for his first time at Africa Down Under. We had Julie Bishop there from the opposition side. We had uh, Gary Gray there. We had uh, the Premier himself, Colin Barnett, engaged with us. And Stephen Smith, who did a lot to pioneer this uh, uh, relationship. And uh, Kevin Rudd was one of the key speakers. So at the highest political levels now, we have this engagement with Africa. We are now giving over a thousand scholarships a year through the AusAid Australia Awards uh, program. My patch, um, this is really appreciated and it's making a difference to the capacity of governments. And through the AusAid programs, exciting new programs like Mining for Development and the Food Security Initiatives, we're really starting to make a difference in Africa and help Africa to help itself. It's about sharing experience and expertise. And as was said by Senator Carr, we're neither Europe nor the US. We are Australia in Africa. We come without that historical colonial baggage and we are a partner in Asia and they're looking more and more to Asia. We're a partner in Asia for them for the future. And so just to finish up, in a few words, how would you describe the relationship between Australia and Zimbabwe? Well, I started by saying it's complicated and it remains complicated because of the nature of the complicated governance arrangements there. Um, and Australia, though, has, I would want to say it has a good relationship with Zimbabwe, certainly with the Zimbabwean people, because we want to support the Zimbabwean people in their quest for democracy, in their quest for economic empowerment. Um, now, there may well be differences with parts of the government and some of the policies uh, of, the, of the government, which, as I've said before, is, is a coalition. But in a few words, we are there for the people of Zimbabwe and we are doing our best to assist them. Thanks very much, Matthew, for speaking to us today. That's great, Dana. Thanks very much. And that was Matthew Newhouse, Australia's ambassador to Zimbabwe.